But there are theories everywhere. And everyone loves to hear them talk about them. So when the defense comes in with something exotic, it makes the jury sit up and listen instead of playing tic-tac-toe with themselves. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 21st century drama shows based on true crime. They were finally freed, not because justice was pursued, but because somebody came forward to tell the truth. For this list, we're looking at the most addictive crime dramas from the start of the 2000s to 2022 that are based on real events. Do you have a favorite true crime show from the 21st century? Let us know in the comment section below. Number 10, Dirty John. Based on the Wondery podcast of the same name, Dirty John tells the story of conman John Meehan and the women he preyed upon and manipulated. What? We're supposed to be talking about you. Not oh. Not your kids, not my job. Oh, you're so much more interesting. Not to me. You're an artist, a designer. Come on, tell me. In 2014, John met successful interior designer Deborah Newell on a dating site for people aged 50 and up. While her adult children were suspicious of this charming stranger in their mom's life, Deborah was too caught up in a whirlwind romance with her dream guy. There's something wrong with him. Do you not see that? Yes. I know that's what you think. After about two months of dating, the couple married in Las Vegas. So Deborah and John, it is my privilege and pleasure with the power vested in me by the state of Nevada to now pronounce you husband and wife. You may now kiss your bride. It wasn't until later that Deborah was finally convinced that John wasn't who he seemed. The second season of the anthology series revisits the case of Betty Broderick, who killed her cheating ex-husband and his new wife in 1989. Number 9. The People vs. O.J. Simpson – American Crime Story In 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman were found stabbed to death in front of her home in Brentwood, California. And how, in a few short hours, these detectives closed up shop on a complex investigation that could have gone any different direction. Nicole's ex-husband, former football star O.J. Simpson, was tried and acquitted of the murders in what was dubbed the Trial of the Century. Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA097211. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder and violence. The televised trial became a media sensation, captivating audiences around the country. Naturally, a crime drama about the case would be equally fascinating, and the perfect first installment in the American Crime Story anthology series. Mr. Darby. This case is a circus, and the defense has made it into a circus, and the court has allowed them to walk Mr. all Mr. Darden, you are close to being held in contempt. Subsequent seasons followed other highly publicized crimes of the 1990s, including the murder of fashion mogul Gianni Versace and the President Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky scandal. Number 8. The Girl from Plainville In 2015, teenager Michelle Carter was accused of convincing her 18-year-old boyfriend Conrad Roy III to take his own life. Both teens struggled with mental illness, and their relationship was toxic. Living in different areas of Massachusetts, Michelle and Conrad's relationship existed almost exclusively over text messages. Conrad's dead. Who's Conrad? The two dated for roughly two years until his death in July of 2014. Detectives found alarming texts on Conrad's phone from Michelle encouraging him to end his life, which led to her arrest and conviction of involuntary manslaughter. A lot of people tell me, a lot of people tell me that I have a lot going for me. I have to be happy, I have to be happy. The unprecedented case gained national notoriety for its unusual circumstances. The empathy for all of us for approaching every character and approaching every subject matter and making sure that we were a, telling the truth about the story but also telling the truth about mental health. Hulu's limited series explores the lives of those involved in this tragedy and examines how texting and social media can affect the mental health of teenagers. Number 7. Inventing Anna 2022 became the year of the scammers, and kicking off this trend was Netflix's Inventing Anna. Based on Jessica Pressler's 2018 New York Magazine expose, the series follows Anna Delvey, real name Anna Surikin, 
the enigmatic 20-something with an ambiguous accent who swindled her way into New York's elite. Her name is Anna Delvey, or Anna Sorokin, no one's sure. She's either a mega-rich German heiress or she's flat broke, and maybe she's Russian. Uh, Vivian, and That's the I point, no one knows. Anna claimed to have a trust fund in her home country of Germany, but really, everyone thought she was rich because she acted rich. What do you wear? Huh? Why do you dress like that? Like, like that? What's you wearing? You look poor. She racked up thousands in unpaid bills at high-end hotels and restaurants, along with taking money from wealthy investors in her plan for an exclusive club. Several bounced checks later, Anna found herself behind bars. You betrayed me. That's one way to look at it. I also beat two out of three of your biggest charges. In this Netflix miniseries, her story catches the attention of reporter Vivian Kent, who sets out to uncover the real story of this fake heiress. Number six, The Dropout. This eight-part Hulu series explores the rise and fall of Stanford dropout-turned-biotech billionaire Elizabeth Holmes, founder and CEO of Theranos. I don't know. President Scholar sounds like you're going to be president someday. I don't want to be president. I, I want to be a billionaire. Holmes, played by Amanda Seyfried, wanted to revolutionize blood testing by creating a process that only involves a finger prick rather than a vial of blood. Despite one university staff member telling her that the technology was simply impossible, Holmes found another who believed in her enough to invest in the company and give up his position at Stanford to work in the Theranos lab. I'm, I'm going to drop out. You're going to no. do what? No. Steve Jobs dropped out, Bill Gates dropped out, Michael Dell, Paul Allen, Elon Musk. Who's Paul Allen? The Silicon Valley entrepreneur attracted more investors and assembled a board of highly respected people. What she didn't have was a working product. It's just a data point that isn't doing what you want it to do. And we I consider that just... an outlier. Okay, but then there would be outliers in every data run we've generated so far. Right, and we delete outliers. Number five, the act. Based on the real life murder of Claudine Dee Dee Blanchard, this Hulu miniseries is as disturbing as it is tragic. Dee Dee told everyone that her daughter Gypsy Rose had a wide range of chronic health issues, including leukemia and brain damage. It's so scary being mentally imprisoned because as much as she wanted to break away from the shackles that her mom created for her, she knows nothing else. Doctors suspected Dee Dee might have Munchausen syndrome by proxy, a disorder in which a parent or caregiver creates and or maintains the illusion that their child or patient is ill sometimes done to gain attention for themselves. And I want to start off with saying, things are not always as they appear. Authorities say the two were lying. You can see Gypsy for yourself walking into court. After a lifetime of lies and unnecessary medical treatment, Gypsy Rose allegedly planned her mother's murder with the help of her secret online boyfriend, Nicholas Godijan. Number four, Narcos. The first two seasons of this Netflix series depict the life and crimes of the infamous drug kingpin Pablo Escobar and the inner workings of his cocaine empire. Yeah, you guessed it, Pablo Escobar, the man who would change my life forever. Two American DEA agents in Colombia, Steve Murphy and Javier Pena, had the task force working with Colombian authorities to take down Escobar and the Medellin cartel. Consulting the real Murphy and Pena, as well as filming partially on location in the South American country, brought a gritty realism to the show, making it a standout in the true crime genre. We wanted just to create a sense of urgency. We didn't want to make a big Hollywood action sequence. We wanted to make it intense and, and disturbing. In season three, we follow a solo Javier Pena in pursuit of the growing Cali cartel. And they ran it like a Fortune 500 company. So without further ado, meet the management team of the Cali Cartel. Number three, When They See Us. Ava DuVernay's critically acclaimed miniseries, When They See Us, tells the heartbreaking story of the Central Park Five. Five African-American and Latino teenagers were wrongfully convicted of assaulting a female jogger in Central Park in 1989. Common logic would tell you that they would not go to jail because they didn't do it. But unfortunately, our criminal justice system lets that happen way too often. 
Though they were innocent of the crime, NYPD detectives manipulated and coerced the five young men into giving false confessions. They played the parents against each other. They played the boys against each other. And they made up all of these stories to get their arrest and their convictions. All were found guilty, and it wasn't until 2002 that they were exonerated. In the series, DuVernay explores issues still present today police violence, racial profiling, and the injustice within the American criminal justice system. Jarrell Jerome scored an Emmy for his powerful performance as Corey Wise. But most importantly, this is for the men that we know as the Exonerated Five. It's for Raymond, Yusuf, Antron, Kevin, and King Corey Wise. The young actor honored the now Exonerated Five in his acceptance speech. Number two. Chernobyl. HBO's Emmy-winning miniseries Chernobyl recounts the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster and the lethal effects of radiation exposure. But showrunner Craig Mazin goes beyond the devastating event itself, depicting the cleanup efforts by coal miners, first responders, and volunteers. No one leaves and cut the phone lines contain the spread of misinformation. The series also tells the tragic story of Lyudmila Ignatenko and her husband Vasily, one of the Pripyat firefighters and first responders who died of radiation poisoning. The couple's harrowing experience is included in Svetlana Alexievich's book, Voices from Chernobyl, The Oral History of a Nuclear Disaster. Do you have any idea what you're dealing with? Of course I do. Please, I don't. No. People are going to hear about this. Wait. People are going to hear. Do you understand? Everyone is going to hear. This was one of many sources Mazin consulted for historical accuracy. In every control room of every nuclear reactor in the world, there is a button with one single purpose. Scram or instantly shut down the reaction. Some operational staff were held responsible for the nuclear accident, including Deputy Chief Engineer Anatoly Dyatlov, who served time in prison for failing to follow safety protocols. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. I am the knight. Fauna Hodel discovers her birth mother has a link to the infamous Black Dahlia murder. Is she around tomorrow? What do you want with her? What do you mean you're on her side? What does that mean? Side of what? <clears throat> what did you write about her? Waco, the 1993 Texas siege against David Koresh and his followers, the Branch Davidians. And it took me some time to put a name on that sucker. I thought I ate some bad, but that wasn't it. <laughs> then I realized what it was. Joy. Unbelievable. Two female detectives investigate a series of assaults in the West. The odds of a cop in Westminster and a cop in Golden sharing specific evidence about their investigations are pretty slim. Dr. Death the terrifying true story of a narcissistic neurosurgeon's horrific malpractice. And how is Mrs. Keller, by the way? Have you checked in on her? Uh, she's doing well. How well? That's not the point. No, nurse. That is the point. You have no clue what it takes to do what I do. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mindhunter In his book, Mindhunter Inside the FBI's Elite Serial Crime Unit, former FBI agent John E. Douglas, along with co-author Mark Olshaker, details his years in the Behavioral Science Unit. How is he different? How is he different from us? What's going through his mind? How, how does he think? Netflix turned his fascinating story into a gripping crime thriller basing the character of Holden Ford on Douglas and Bill Tench on fellow FBI profiler Robert K. Ressler, along with psychologist Dr. Wendy Carr, who is inspired by nurse researcher Ann Wolbert Burgess, Ford and Tench develop criminal profiling. The transcribed interviews of Kemper were very, very useful and really set a major tone for that project because he was so expansive. Using the psychology of convicted murderers, the trio proves that this information can aid in ongoing and future crimes. What we're interested in is your relationship with your family and what bearing that relationship had on the crimes. Please. The series follows the agents as they interview some of the most notorious serial killers of the 20th century, 
including Charles Manson and Edmund Kemper. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.